Hello, church family. It's Pastor Thad again. And I wanted to pick up just where we left off last week with trying to build a habit of reading God's Word in a daily reading plan in one of the many resources that we see out there. And I hope some of those that I posted were helpful. If not, ping me, send me an email, call me, stop by and say, hey, this isn't working. What else can we do? But in this week and next week, I want to look at some of the reasons why we should have a habit of daily interacting and, and devouring, chewing, being nourished by God's Word. And then next week, I want to look at some of the reasons why we don't. Why we think, yeah, I mean, I can do it occasionally. I can talk to God occasionally. I can look up His Word, you know, when I need a a quick reminder, a reference of why this is important or why, you know, why I should go to church on Sunday or those kind of things. But I want to start with uh, looking at Jesus's reference to building a house. And I think it's helpful anytime, and this might be part of the practice that we can get into of reading Old and New Testament, like a lot of the good Bible reading plans do. But anytime we're looking at a New Testament passage, I like to see where it's built on or where it's framed or how it's got a correlation, some connection to the Old Testament, whether it's in theme or in topic, or the word choice that one of the New Testament writers uses, especially here with Jesus, talking about what it is to build your house. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7. This is fairly familiar to most of us, where he says, um, Jesus is talking about the way that he, you live out your faith. This is the end of the um, Sermon on the Mount, if we remember that. So he says in chapter 7, verse 24, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So here, Jesus is clearly talking about, he makes sure to, to emphasize, to put up in the very front of this short parable, everyone who hears these words and does them. So there's two key pieces of what it means to understand who God is. It's to first hear the word, or in, in the case now that it's written down, because we don't have Jesus personally speaking to us in a sermon on the mountain. It, we, need to, we need to read, we need to understand, we need to know God's word. And that implies that by knowing it, you're actually doing it, you're putting it into practice. So you know it to a level that's so uh, real and significant and applicable, it's understandable you get what it means to do, that you actually go ahead and do those. Now, if you don't, you know, there are serious consequences, but I, I don't think that's the point that Jesus is trying to get across to us here. He's not trying to instill in us this obligation, oh, I better do this or else my house is going to fall apart. It, because it's, it's him building into a daily constructing, framing, all the way up to the rafters and the shingles of your house, every layer of your house should be anchored in God's word, in who he is and what he's done for us. And in that light, I want to put this in perspective of Psalm 127. So we see the same exact phrase, even though Jesus is using uh, in, in Greek here a different phrase to build your house than in uh, Psalms with Hebrew to build your house. But it, it the same exact idea. So Psalms, this is Solomon talking he says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen's labor in vain. So we get the same exact idea, idea that we're building a house by daily, by, by working, you know, digging the basement, laying the foundation all the way up, however many stories we go. And here, Solomon's trying to instill in us, there's a wisdom that comes with thinking and planning through. But unless the Lord is doing that, unless the Lord is, is at the core and the foundational level of what you're doing, unless the Lord is actually the one building the house, you can do all the work you want, and you're going to labor in vain. 
a lot of people make connection to this this idea of doing work that's in vain to what we think Solomon also wrote in Ecclesiastes where he talks about vanity vanity all this work I put in and it's been vanity and he comes to the conclusion because I haven't done it for the glory of God to his honor and glory I've done it for my own benefit I've done it to you know to include increase my own wealth or you know my own reputation or, or popularity but to get back to this idea so Jesus has this important thing to hear and do the word of God and here Solomon is talking about unless the Lord himself builds it those who are building it are laboring in vain their efforts are, are wasted so to line those up to say if I'm working I need to be working and and understanding how my work needs to be anchored on God's word what he has already said and done so when I do when I get that when I start that idea I, I need to start with knowing God's word and that changes that uh, way of applying God's word to simply oh well here it says to do this and this and this so I better go and do this and this and this it changes that from a, a here's the point now go do it to a I want to know God more I want to know his goodness and grace and mercy and love and I want to be shaped by that so that I'm I'm wise I understand the the way God works because of who he is so that I can do the same thing in the world and that way we can build our house and we're actually seeing here's the the trick right we're actually seeing that it's the Lord building it through me and we can say both of those things are true that the Lord is building it but he's using my efforts my work my daily uh, focus and energy and strength and and pursuits God's building it he's using my energy to be the hands and feet of a lot of the things that I see happen and so we can see that that helps to clarify it's it's the Lord building it but he's choosing to do it through his word and his energy and the, the spirit that powerfully works in me to build that house to build the foundation in my life that won't change everything to be happy and you know fluffy bunnies and butterflies all the time but it'll change my heart so that my heart is focused on him and his desires first and foremost so that when you seek first the kingdom of God you'll see that everything else is added because that's that's the benefit and the blessing of knowing Christ first and foremost in your life. I pray that's true. I pray that helps as we get into these uh, slower days of life, maybe, and uh, more distractions, a fuller season of life where it's harder to have that habit of reading God's Word, but it's just as important. So make some comments. Email me if you have any questions or if you have any other thoughts on Bible reading plans or ways to, to stay accountable, to encourage one another, knowing that it's the Lord who's building his house. Amen.